Welcome to the InfoWorks Cisco Academy Learning Podcast Series. These videos are provided by John Owens and Chris Han, Cisco Academy instructors at GST BOCES, Pauline Bush Campus. This is Series 1, Network Mathematics. In this series, we start with understanding numbering systems. Understanding numbering systems begins with a review of the decimal system. Before we can start the binary numbering system, or base 2, we need to refresh your memory of the base 10 or decimal numbering system, the system we use every day. Let's take a look at what makes up a numbering system using this base 10 system. If you remember from your days in elementary school, you might remember that each part of a base 10 number has a position, and those positions have a value. Let's take a look at an example. 143. The position values in this number, as you might recall, are the ones, the tens, and the hundreds. Each position in any numbering system has a specific value, and the reason these positions have the values of 1, 10, and 100 is due to the fact that each position is a power of 10. Let's take a look at another example. Here is the positions with their place values again. Now let's add some more information. First. The 1's position can be represented as 10 to the 0 power. Note that any number raised to the 0 power is 1. Also note that the base, in this case 10, is the number we use to represent the value of the positions. It is the base of the numbering system, after all. Now let's look at the next two place values. The 10's position can be represented as 10 to the first power. You should note that any number raised to the first power is itself. Last. Let's look at the hundreds position. You have probably figured out by now that the position can be represented as 10 squared, or 10 to the second power. Another way to determine position value is that you can figure out these position values by multiplying the base to the position to the right. Let's see what I mean. In this case, we are still dealing with the number 143. The trick is, to remember that in this mem method and in this class, our numbering systems all begin with the least significant digit of 1. So the first position is always 1. Now in order to find the next position, we multiply the first position, in this case 1, by the base value, which is 10, giving us a position value of 10. In our example, obtaining the value of the last position, in this case the third position, is accomplished by multiplying 10, the value of the second position, by 10, the base, giving us a value of 100. Now that we have an understanding of the idea of position values, let's look at them in a different fashion. In this image, the base 10 positions have been placed into a table, and we have added the thousands position, or 10 cubed. When you are dealing with a numbering system that is foreign to you, this is the best way to write out the position values for easy conversion. Now let's place a, a base 10 number, 1,439, beneath these values. If we multiply the position values by the number in the position, we get the following values, 1,000, 400, 30, and 9. This is shown in the image. To obtain the value of the number, we then add all the position values together and obtain a value of 1,439. I'm aware that you already knew this. We are preconditioned to understanding the base 10 numbering system. But if you think back to your younger years, the place values were foreign to you, as they will be when you tackle binary, octal, and hexadecimal. This lesson may have been somewhat trivial to you but we will be using the information from this lesson in the next video in this sequence, Learning the Binary Numbering System. See you next time.